Treasure for Alzheimer's, an interview with Dr. Richard Morgan about his experiences using the art of Lester E. Potts, Jr. In October of 2016, Cognitive Dynamics Foundation President and Neurologist Dr. Daniel C. Potts traveled to North Huntington, Pennsylvania with fellow dementia advocates Linda Everman and Dr. Don Windorf to interview retired Presbyterian pastor, author, and Clergy and Faith United Against Alzheimer's Coalition's co-convener, Dr. Richard Morgan, about his lifelong ministry to elders, persons living with dementia, and caregivers. In this clip, Dr. Morgan shares his experiences of using the art of Lester E. Potts, Jr., a rural Alabama sawmiller who discovered hidden artistic talent in the throes of Alzheimer's to engage persons living with late-stage dementia whom he visited in long-term care facilities. Dr. Morgan shares how connections and relationships were forged which formerly did not exist and gives hope to caregivers and others who seek to know the identities still deeply present inside each of us despite the loss of cognition. The book, Treasure for Alzheimer's, is available through Amazon. Richard, you mentioned how your experience with your mother's dementia really lit a fire and, and got you excited about trying to, to make a difference for these folks. Well, you know, the same thing happened with me and my dad's Alzheimer's disease and his incredible story of artistic creativity in, in someone who had never shown any talent for that and how it just changed his life and transformed him, gave him hope and gave everybody around him hope and inspiration. And so out of that story, Richard, is, has really grown everything that we're a part of in our, in our ministry through our foundation, Cognitive Dynamics. And one of the things that's been so uh, incredible for me is, is to um, sort of develop a relationship with you around my father's creativity and art because of the things that you've, you've done with that. And, and I thank you so much for your interest in it and for being so innovative and, and using Dad's art in a, in a particularly unique way. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, this has been, talk about an incredible journey. Uh, one of my blessings was being able to contact Danny Potts and find out that his father had done this work after he had Alzheimer's. And of course, with my concern for people here with Alzheimer's, I immediately said, uh, can you send me some of his paintings? So he sent me a whole portfolio of, Doc, of Lester Potts Jr.'s work. <clears throat> and what I did was go up and visit people, mainly in the memory care, but there were one or two in personal care, who had been diagnosed either with Alzheimer's or vascular dementia or some other form of dementia. I didn't know what was going to happen. I sat down with most times one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes a little group around a table, and I just showed them the, paper, the pictures. I never said a word. I said, I want you to look at these beautiful paintings and tell me what you see and what you feel. I was amazed. One person who had never spoke said, when he showed the picture that your father did of the boat, he said, you know, I was in the Navy. And that picture reminds me of being in the Navy. And he talked a little bit more. He had never spoke, in my knowledge, at least to me. And there was another uh, dear lady there who likes to sing. And when I showed the picture of the fence, what she said was, you know, uh, I'm fenced in here. Perfect. And she said, I'm going to sing a song. And she sang the whole song of Don't Fence Me In. I'll never forget it. She was there, you know, she was there yesterday. So that made me continue. What I would do is after they, I conducted the interview, I'd go into a room and write down what they said. It was so powerful. One man was a, was a retired doctor, and all he did was wander around up there with a, with a, like he was still checking patients with charts. And he looked at the book and he said, I like the cover. That's all he said, but he never spoke. He went around acting like he was still a doctor, but he said, I like the cover of your father's art. And one of my favorite stories is of a dear lady who language was very garbled, couldn't understand her, but I know her person was there. Her soul was there because she always came to worship. And my wife Allison and I conducted worship there and at the end of every uh, worship we would say namaste, which means the God in me welcomes the God in you. And this lady was always there. And when she saw the picture of the butterfly, beautiful picture, she said, you know, that's like my life. I was transformed spiritually by God. Oh, 
Oh, I was just awestruck. Like the lady who once said, someone asked her, what is your name? She said, well, I don't know my name, but God does. And I found more spirituality, more sensitivity to God there than I ever find in the church. I'll be honest with you. It's wonderful to see these people just emerge. In fact, this is something that spoke to me in, in one of your writings. Ring the bells that still can ring, but get your perfect offering. There's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in by Leonard Cohen. I saw that. Crack pots, minds gone, verbal, verbal language disappearing. Yet there was light there if we took time just to listen. So that became a wonderful experience. I'll never forget this book. You, you sent me a treasure. We'll find out later the name of another book. But it became a treasure. And unfortunately, so many of the dear people whom I interviewed have died or gone to, 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 to the nursing home. But I still carry on with this book. So thank you. Well, Richard, this has been a treasure for all of us, our entire family. And good things are coming from your work uh, in this way, believe me. One more story that, again, I'll never forget, uh, your father's wonderful painting of the boat on shore. We were sitting at a table, there were three of them, three people with dementia, one never spoke, and one man said, yeah, I'm grounded. That's all he said. But the lady sitting there said, yeah, but look, look at the flowers. There's new life coming out of that ship. I'll never forget that. And they, they were people who hardly ever spoke. And they would sing, because music is the other great way to reach people with dementia. But other than that, even the words they said. Well, you know, Lester was, an old, was the old boat that was washed up on shore, and there, was, oh, yeah. there, were, there were beautiful, beautiful things coming out right. of him as well. So it's a metaphor for his life as well. Right. You know, and you, you actually took um, your experiences and the things that you wrote and the reflections and produced a book called Treasure for Alzheimer's. And this, this is a beautiful book. And uh, tell us a little bit about your thoughts about that, about that book. Well, I felt like this was groundbreaking to find people with Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia being able to respond to art. To me, this was, I'm, I'm not an artist. Uh, I have more interest in music than art. But I said, this is groundbreaking. So then when you, I talked to you and I said, can I use some of your pictures? I, I, what I'll do is re tell the narratives of what they said. And that became the book. It was literally a treasure. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. I kept thinking about that. And it was a treasure. What they said was a treasure that needed to be preserved. For not only now, but for future generations to realize that there are people with, these, with this terrible disease who, who, who can tell you something through the art. Your father's art, who had Alzheimer's, communicated with these people who had Alzheimer's. That's an incredible, incredible reality. And I don't think I've heard much about that. Richard, there's not much written about that. And, and I don't think we really know how the art or creativity of a person with dementia can maybe particularly uh, communicate to someone else who has dementia. There may be something about the minds, that, uh, the way they see things that's similar. So it may be that it, it speaks more to them. And right. so I think more research is needed along those lines. And I'm reminded by that quote by Albert Schweitzer that, that you and I both love about uh, the worth of a human being be the colors that that human being oh, yeah. produces in another life. Wow. And that's exactly what Lester did, and that's exactly what you have done in your use of this art with other people. So thank you so much. My pleasure.